Broadcasting live from WOYK's downtown studios at Santander Stadium. Talking York's home teams. Welcome to York College Spartan Sports Weekly on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Now, here are your hosts of Spartan Sports Weekly, Daryl Henry and Scott Geis. And good Monday, everyone. Welcome to the next edition of your College Spartan Sports Weekly here on Sports Radio 1350. Also, WOYK 1350.com, the WOYK mobile apps. And Scott? YCPSpartans.com. That's right. Welcome in. We've got some playoff hoops to talk about, some spring sports that were canceled and <laughs> one or two that weren't. Come on, and, look at it. It's a gorgeous day outside right now. Snowfall and everything. It, it uh... You know, we've been complaining about how ugly Mondays have been the last couple of weeks. Well, it's beautiful and sunny out. Too bad it's 20 degrees. So we can't get everything. We can only get one thing at a time. It seems today is, is the sun. So maybe next week we can get the sun and some warmer temperatures. Maybe. And in addition to Spartan Sports... You get your weather report every Monday yeah, on this that's, show. That's what we're here for. At least we're not going to talk tribe baseball, even though they are at spring training and things are looking good early. You just worked it in. Uh, he, I, always, I always do. He is he is Scott Guys. Daryl Henry with you. Derek Barenhausen in the back row. Say hello, Derek. Hello. All right. You want to say anything else? Um, not right now, Daryl. Okay. He's a man of measured words. He's, he's hard at research. Well, uh, <laughs> This this might be the show where we get to the old guy radio, but probably not because you just keep teasing it like it's coming, and you know people are just going to keep tuning in, waiting for it, and you know like Lucy pulling the football away from Charlie Brown, you're just going to pull it right out from underneath them every time. <laughs> Oldest trick in the book, hey, just whatever works. Dangle that carrot, but there is a lot to talk about on this week's program. And and first off, guys, we'll start with women's basketball. And again, you can find the archives of, of this show on WOYK1350.com and YCPSpartans.com. So I want to get that out there up front. But uh, heading right into it, and the women will continue their season tomorrow night playing uh, <laughs> at Christopher Newport, as it as it turns out. and Daryl's favorite trip. have egg on, on my face. And uh, I'd like to go back to this weekend and, and explain what happened and, and we'll get in and, and break down the the basketball the, the actual it can be really simple I, s- I screwed up i gave bad well, information I did too. yeah it just it happens it's not like we were trying to mislead people you know we had figured out certain scenarios and there were there were a number of scenarios that could have occurred we kind of latched on to the most likely one and then forgot that there was one key factor in it and that was a game that was played on sunday at marymount or at Frostburg State that had been postponed Saturday. So we apologize to everybody because we gave you bad information. Sometimes that happens. So, uh, you know, we'll, we're, we're heading to Christopher Newport. And, you know, obviously I think a trip to Marymount's a little bit more um, palatable. But, hey, the schedule says we go to Christopher Newport. We go to Christopher Newport and see what can happen. I mean, I proclaimed that we were going to Marymount. Well, <laughs> like, like I was. Okay. Like it was etched in stone. I think everybody knows we're not perfect, so it was, uh, you know, it was something that obviously you like to be right all the time. But you make mistakes. I made, have made plenty of them, but uh, <laughs> certainly going around and telling everybody Saturday before we went to the men's game, hey, we're playing at Marymount, but it's okay. Um, you know, it'll be a good test to go down there, and certainly uh, that's a team that plays much better at home than they did on the road. But uh, the Spartans are. You know, I think they're in a good position because it, we have nothing to lose. You know, we're going down there as the fifth seed in the tournament, and you know they can kind of let it all hang out and play. And you know, I think we have a good chance to go down there and, and perform well. It's a, it's a team that York beat earlier this season. One of their most impressive performances of the year on the defensive end, especially fifty four forty two at home on January thirty first. I thought their game plan against Camry Green was terrific. They really made it tough on on. Uh, the captains to even get the ball into her, and obviously uh, she can be a beast on mm-hmm. on the low blocks. So they're going to have to figure out a way to to do that again, and you know maybe Christopher Newport makes an adjustment, and the Spartans will have to do the same thing. I think uh, Sam Ruse is going to be the key player to the game. I think she's going to have to continue to play well. She played fantastic basketball against Salisbury, and really has played well all year. Uh, but but Sam's really doing a lot of good things. I mean, to to for her. A match they Christopher Newport has no good matchups for Sam. Yeah, you know, obviously Green on on Shea is is a you know kind of a can be a standstill battle between those two players. 
Uh, but I don't. I'm not sure they have anybody that can guard Sam. I'm not sure there's anybody that can um, stay with her in the perimeter when she chooses to drive or when she gets the ball in the post. So I think that's going to be a big key, and, and obviously a, a huge key in that game is taking care of the basketball. Uh, and that's something that when you go on the road, you got to do a better job of that. And you know the statistics say that when the Spartans win, they do a much better job of taking care of the ball than when they lose. And, you know, there's other stats that kind of run along those similar lines. But I think turnovers is the big one. Having possessions, you know, maximizing your possessions, scoring, or at least getting a shot or two on a number of possessions is really important for York. And that will be, I think, a really a big factor on Tuesday night at Christopher Newport. First meeting January 3rd, Christopher Newport won at home, 62-51. And historically, they're home record is just through the roof but the spartans will be trying to pull off the first round victory and big picture scott the way that this team got in i mean <laughs> you could definitely say they they backed in which is unfortunate but um you know they had a few games where late it looked like a, a win was almost in the bag and it got away including the last two at home including saturday but on a positive sense on saturday you go up against the top ranked team in the region you lead them almost the entire way. Really, you play a, a great game uh, in, in almost all facets until the final two minutes. They go on a run um, and pull that one out, avoiding back-to-back losses. I mean, they, you know, being able to do that, they kind of showed why they're ranked 15th in one poll and, and 16th in the other. But you know, the Spartans also showed that they can play with anybody in, in the CAC the way they performed. Well, it's you know, you look at the last couple games, and I, I, the one thing, and I've talked to Coach about this. Sarah Shearer's injury has played a far more significant role than I think anybody ever expected. You know, we were you, you worry when you lose Carly McFatridge two games into the season, then you lose Beth Wisely eight games into the season, and those are two two kids that we're going to play a lot for us. Well, now all of a sudden you take Sarah out as well, and your rotation becomes even shorter. Uh, you know, I don't think at the beginning of the year when we had a seventeen player roster that anybody would think that injuries to a guard slash small forward would have such a significant impact. But what it has done is changed where people were playing. It's changed the substitution patterns. You know, Sarah was playing great with Bish. Those two were really clicking together and playing well together. When we went on that run of good play, it was because Sarah was playing good basketball. Um, And losing her to injury, I think, has hurt. It's forced people to play maybe more minutes than um, would be ideal. And, you know, that's, that's a big deal. But... The good news is I thought they played their best game uh, in, a, in a couple weeks against Salisbury on Saturday. I mean, Sam Roos, 17 points, 13 rebounds, 7 assists, 4 block shots, 2 steals, 40 minutes of play. <laughs> that's a pretty significant line. I mean, that's and that's a sophomore. That's a sophomore has and, – and one thing about Sam – she has no idea how good she could be. I mean, she's athletic. She's long. She can shoot it. The shot from the perimeter, as I believe you had talked on the broadcast the other day, has become significantly more reliable. Uh, she's really that's added a lot to her game because now all of a sudden you got to come out and guard her, and she's good enough to put the ball on the floor and go by you. Finish left-handed, finish right-handed, which is a huge key for Sam. And I think she is, um, you know, she's a player that next year she has a chance to be special and you know it's up to her how hard she works and and the time she puts in but she she can be a significant all-conference caliber player next year yeah it's uh it's a skill set she could produce a triple double at some point yes <laughs> she could i mean she wasn't all that far away on saturday so uh the spartans uh, five thirty is the tip off tomorrow night at christopher newport our pregame will start at five fifteen here on radio tomorrow so Hope you can join us for that. And while we're talking about the women's team, uh, Senior Day was on Saturday, and Coach Whitman joined us pregame, as she always does. Had a lot of nice stuff to say about the seniors, and we've got some excerpts from that conversation. But uh, Shea Wassel finishing her regular season in style with a 1,000 career points combined between York and Gwynedd Mercy and course uh, Jess Salby and Kaylee Knight as well and those are three players Scott and we'll hear coach talk about it but they've overcome a lot uh, just to be on the court at, at times in fact yep it's a good group of kids and certainly we will miss them next year and you know they were kind of put in a difficult position as a group you know they had to be that transition and that bridge from the four seniors who you know pretty much dominated the headlines and, and dominated the leadership I mean those those were four kids that were 
outstanding leaders in their own respect and each in their own way for the last four years. And now all of a sudden you have this leadership void and you have these seniors who, you know, everybody expects these seniors to be these these great leaders. And that can be a hard situation to step into. But I think they've done a really good job of stepping in and and doing a good job of leading this very young team uh, to a good season. If you know, This is about what we thought. You know, obviously yeah. – we have three losses to the th- one loss to each of the three bottom teams. I don't think anybody saw that coming, but we also have some wins over some good teams and some really good games. I mean, this team has not since the month of Jan since the calendars rolled over to January. They haven't been blown out at all. No. I mean, they have not been beat you know significantly, and and that's an accomplishment. We just need a couple more playmakers to come in and be able to finish games off and be able to you know that game at Marymount. That should have been a win. You know, obviously the game in Southern Virginia should have been a win. The Wesley game early in the year when we weren't playing real well uh, could have been a win. The Penn State Harrisburg game early in the year when we were weren't very good. Um, you know, so you, sometimes it's timing. It's when you get to see a team, uh, and I think they they counted for themselves pretty well on Saturday against a team that is really good. Uh, when you have two guards that are your two best players, uh, that's that's a recipe for success. And when when Anna Hackett has seven or eighteen points in the second half alone, that's a pretty significant thing. You know, that's that senior leadership, the, the player who can come in and really make a difference. And yeah. you know, I think we'll be looking at that as a year, in the years to come for us. Yeah, you mentioned you know being in every game. The final four losses of the year were by one point, two, two in double overtime, and then six on Saturday. And victories going back from uh, the start of the new year, they won a game by 7, then by 30, then by 11, then by 17, 12, 10, 12. So uh, in the victories, they've kind of stomped the opposition, and uh, the losses all down the stretch, they're a play away from winning those games. Yes, and that's the, you know, that's the positive thing. It's you know Sometimes you've got to look a little deeper than what the record is. You know, and We're going to talk about that with the men as well. You know, Sometimes the, the singular scores do not – give an indication of what uh, really happened in the game or how, you know, it's literally those two-point games. It's a play here, a play there. It's a turnover here that we don't get at least a shot at. Uh, but but one thing that I think you'll notice is team plays hard and, you know, really, we're very fortunate to have one of the best coaches in the country on our bench, and I think there's no doubt about that. And really, this might be one of her best coaching jobs to, to have to mold this group of, of kids together and I think she's done a great job with it. And, hey, it wouldn't surprise me if they were able to uh, make a little noise in the in the conference tournament. Yeah, and Coach Whitman did join us again on Saturday talking about this year's senior class. It is senior day, and talk about uh, each of the three that will be honored today, and, and starting with Shay, who's had uh, an awesome senior season. What has she meant to this year's team in particular? And you know, I know you probably wish you had her for more, more than just two years. Yeah, she's you know been a gift to us and playing here for the last two years and, and like you said her senior year has been really special and um, you know I'm hoping she hits that thousandth point today and um, you know she's our leading scorer, leading rebounder and she's been pretty steady for us and um, you know has really played within herself and um, you know we're gonna miss that patented Shea move under the basket next year and maybe we'll have uh, one of our incoming freshmen. Uh, have that skill I don't know yeah. but um you know she, she's done a great job for us and she's fit in with our program and um you know she's been a pleasure to coach and uh, it'll be it'll be hard to see her go yeah and Kaylee Knight uh who's been here all four years of course and uh, you know maybe doesn't jump off scoring on the stat sheet every night but what about some of the little things that she does and there is that split shirt yeah. <laughs> Salisbury and York for Mr. Mozniak <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He's the first one in the gym. He'll, he'll <laughs> go all. His, he had to make his grand entrance. <laughs> I love he'll, it. He'll go all York next year. I would hope, right? Yeah. yeah. Now he needs to sit in the exact middle of the gym. <laughs> That's what he needs to do. Um, yeah. Next year will be all York for sure. Uh, you know, Kaylee Knight is just. I can't say enough about that kid. I mean, she is first of all an excellent student. She's going to be a nurse. You know, she's one of our nursing students. Um, you know, she's she's been through a lot physically, you know, with her bad back and, um, you know, this year getting her appendix out in the beginning yeah. of the season and she's had a lot of, you know, knee tweaks and sprained ankles and just she's just one of those kids who you put in the game and you know exactly what you're going to get from her. You know, she just plays so hard and she rebounds and she's not, you know, 
our best offensive player in the post, but she's one of the hardest working players that we have. She just gives it everything that she has, whether she's a starter, she's coming off the bench, um, you know, she's going to go in there and play great defense. And she's just a great teammate. She's been an excellent leader this year as well as one of our co-captains. And um, Kaylee, you know, she, she has been incredibly coachable and has never, ever complained about anything. She just plays hard and does her job. And like I said, uh, she's just a coach's dream. And Jess Selby as well today, who had the privilege of, uh, unfortunately due to injury, we've we've had her for five years, but uh, another player that has overcome a lot, obviously, with what she went through a couple of years ago. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't think I've ever had a kid um, love the game as much as Jess Selby. <laughs> and I knew it when I recruited her, and then, you know, it, all five years, I mean, that that young lady has given everything that she's had and has fought through, like you said, injuries and especially the ACL tear it was so disappointing because she had finally, I think, gotten to her peak in terms of, um, you know, in great shape, uh, just at the top of her game. You know, she was playing with, you know, her teammates that she came in with, uh, Kelsey Murphy and Britt and Asia and Kristen. She actually came in with that class. I mean, what an awesome recruiting class that was. Yeah. And, <laughs> And it was just disappointing, but when she decided, you know, to redshirt and then to come back for a fifth year, I think that just tells everyone how much she loves the game of basketball because she certainly didn't need that year academically. Um, she's our best student. She's got a 3.92 GPA. You know, she's a double she's a biology major, double minor. She is just the epitome of what student athlete means. Um, and has been a great leader for us. It's been a tough year for Jess, I think, in terms of, I think she's disappointed in how, you know, she's played. She's had a couple games this year, like the Wesley game, which was my 300th win. I'll never forget her going in that game and hitting those four threes. Yeah. And that was really special. I'll never forget that. And, um, you know, Jess is always going to be really special to me. All right, that's Coach Whitman on Saturday. And, uh, you know, not a win, but it was. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've never felt s so good coming away from a doubleheader loss as I did on Saturday with the way yeah. both teams played, with the women going up against really one of the top teams in the country, and then the men almost. You know, them going to double overtime, and, and we'll talk about that as well. But uh, that, that's okay this year. Yeah, exactly. That's okay it, this year. Exactly. That, that I don't want to be feeling like this. At the end of next year, no, because I think the the expectations are. But the games were, were oh, they were terrific. great. They hey, were if you don't care who wins, very exciting. Those were a pair of great games. Yeah. I mean, from a from just watching it and the competitiveness and the atmosphere. You know, we didn't have a ton of people there on Saturday, but the the, the people that were there were into the game and really it was fun to watch. And and you certainly you don't like losing, but they were two really good games it's there's not a you know there might have been a couple plays here and there that you could say you know if they would have gone different but the fact of the matter is you got to tip your cap to Salisbury too they made some plays and they you know when they needed to win and they hey their men needed a lot more than our kids did and they you know they really showed that in double overtime and and the women they don't want to go into the CAC tournament with a bye and two straight losses so yeah. you know they're playing for something too so yeah it's um we'll never really like to celebrate losses I but know. it didn't yeah. feel it didn't feel like a, a normal doubleheader sweep would would felt. Exactly. Uh, let, let's be clear. We do care deeply about who wins. But, uh, <laughs> Derek, you have a, a marketing idea. Uh, would you like me to use it tomorrow night, maybe? I'll give you credit. Absolutely, Daryl. Yeah, it's all yours. I wish I would have came with it sooner, though. Uh, 1K Shea in honor of the 1,000 points. Or Shea K25. But that's a little, eh, that might, might be too much. So we'll go with. 1K Shea has a nice ring to it, don't you think? Yeah, I just hope I can remember it. But <laughs> Write it down. I, I will. Very well done, though. All right, so the women again at Christopher Newport tomorrow night. Our coverage will begin at 5.15 for the opening round of the CAC tournament. We'll take a break here and talk about the men's season that wrapped up on Saturday. And, again, you never want to feel too good about a loss, but uh, they certainly played one of the hottest teams in the league. Awfully tough. We'll get some thoughts from Matt Hunter on big picture going forward, so stay tuned for that. You're listening to your college Spartan Sports Weekly here on Sports Radio 1350, WOYK1350.com, and the WOYK mobile apps. 
Turning a double play takes teamwork, and so does preparing for life's challenges. Murray Securus works with you hand-in-hand, providing thoughtful solutions to help you plan for the future. Team up with Murray Securus for safer, more secure risk management, personal insurance, health benefits, wealth management, even cutting-edge human resource solutions for individuals and small-to-large businesses. Living life in a winning way just takes a little teamwork. Call Murray Securus today at 397-9600 or go to murrayins.com. Blazing fast service for all of your wipeouts. OSS Health Urgent Care will take care of all of your muscular and skeletal sprains, pops, twists, and breaks in minutes, not hours. Open seven days a week for your urgent orthopedic needs. Now at two convenient locations, 1855 Powder Mill Road in York and 856 Century Drive in Mechanicsburg. Visit us online at osshealth.com. OSS Health Urgent Care. Experience you can trust. Dad, I'm home. Why am I not surprised to find you laying on the couch? Oh, hi, son. Is your fall semester over already? Yep, I'm loving it at York College, and I really like living on campus this year. Uh, yeah, that reminds me. We need to have a little talk. You know, about the facts of life. Dad, we had that talk years ago. And anyway, I don't believe you ordered me from Amazon.com. I mean, your mom and I are helping to pay for your college as much as we can. But now you've got room and board on top of books and tuition, and you haven't asked me once for money. Dad, I told you last year that York Educational Federal Credit Union took care of all that. That student choice loan we applied for last year was a one-time application. All I have to do this year is tell them how much I need, and they send the money right to the school. The loan is set up similar to my Stafford loan, so I don't have to start making payments until six months after I graduate. I told you YEFCU rocks. College has been good for you, son. You're smarter already. York Educational Federal Credit Union, 1601 South Queen Street, York. Apply online at yefcu.org. Federally insured by NCUA. Believe it or not, spring is coming. And we've got the bases covered like etch with dirt during a tantrum. Join Daryl Henry and Atlantic League Manager of the Year, Mark Mason, for Rev's Hot Stove Weekly, every Friday at 4. Breaking news each week, with the latest player signings exclusively here first. Plus, fan interaction online, interviews with players, and we'll highlight really good calls from umpires. Uh-huh. Maybe we should have stopped with interviews with players. Rev's Hot Stove Weekly, Fridays at 4, on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. In December, it was a four-point game, and now these traditional rivals meet for a chance to play for district gold. I'm Ron Ruman. Andy Bria and I will have the next chapter in the York Catholic Trinity Girls Storied Rivalry tonight at 7.15 on the High School Basketball Game of the Week presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. The Irish are shooting for an unprecedented 10th straight district title, but the Shamrocks, once the queens of District 3, would love to dethrone their old rivals. Your Catholic Trinity tonight at 715 on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Your home for York's home team. The York College Spartans play here. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK, York. Back here on York College Spartan Sports Weekly, on to the men's basketball team who wrapped up their season on Saturday. Uh, my idea of, of feeling slightly good about the doubleheader Saturday has been slightly shot down, I feel like. I feel, no, I I feel less that, good no, about I don't it. Think that's, no, I, think it's, <laughs> I, don't think it's, I don't think it's bad to feel good about it because we did play well and we did do a lot of really good things. I just, you know, I, I, my one concern is that you get to the point where you feel like it's, uh, it's okay to lose. Yeah, you don't want that to become no, the, I don't want that. I yeah. don't want that to. And I don't think Coach does either. I don't think anybody wants to get to that point where it's like, hey, we played really well, guys. Woohoo. Yeah, you know, I, it, it, I think in terms of what we're doing now, it's okay to feel like that. That's not okay next year. You know, and, and you know, I think it's just you don't want to get caught in that trap of feeling like, okay, well, hey, it's the good ship Spartan. We're trying. We're trying really hard that becomes, you know, it's a different storyline next year. I think there's a lot of, you know, this year, between this year and next year, there's going to be a lot of transition, and a transition for the good. But expectations are going to be a little bit higher, too. I think everybody within the program acknowledges that that will be the case next year. Um, but there's still a lot of things that need to happen to help that, to help expedite that process. So I don't I don't want to poo-poo on your parade there, Daryl, but yeah, I think it, it's Well, the, okay game, the games were exciting. Oh, the games were great. <laughs> I, I mean, if I, I had fun. I had too I much fun. If I didn't care who won, it'd be, it would have been a great game to just sit and watch. Um, you know, but yeah, it's... 
too much I, fun for my own good. No, I, I enjoy that you have fun because it makes makes our broadcast that much better. So, <laughs> you know, no, I enjoy that you have fun. And, and hey, we played really well, and we did a good job. And you know, picking up a win on Wednesday night against Frostburg, and then playing the number two team in the conference, you know, to double overtime. Uh, that's that's nice, and that's tangible progress. And I think a lot of times this year, you know, obviously you get to see every game. Um, I get to see I see most of them through video or through being there in person, and we've been able to see those those incremental progressions and incremental process. Not everybody else has. So when we talk about it, I think it's a little different for us to talk about it. People want to start seeing results, and I think you know the end of this season helped show you know had tangible positive results for for the spartans yeah uh saturday against salisbury that also without brad wessner who was severely under the weather so uh you know they took a surging team to, to double overtime shorthanded and we had talked about this a little bit in previous weeks but do you think it's reasonable with you know a couple of pieces added that you could jump from where we were this year to you know, 500 or a little bit better and, and be there in the mix. And, you know, oh, is that a reasonable expectation for next year? I think that's reasonable. The pieces have to be right. You know, the pieces have to fit in the way we need it to fit in to be able to be successful. Because this is a good core of kids. You know, you look at our two starting forwards in, in Max Bell and, and Dalton Myers, and they're two of the best young players in the conference, regardless of position. What you need is your guard play to be a little bit better a little bit more consistent i don't even know if better is the right word but more consistent and being able to support those guys you know there's there's some guys i thought um blade reich towards the end of the season play was playing good basketball stats don't really look that great because he's playing in in a particular role but his level of athleticism and the way he's playing he doesn't look scared like a freshman anymore you know matt scamuffo played really well this week we need him to play well you need mike duffy to play well so you need more pieces. You need a little bit more depth. Uh, but in terms of who will take the floor next year, we should be a pretty competitive group of, of, of players. And, you know, hey, our conference is tough. You know, you have St. Mary's, which has always been good. Salisbury's really elevated their play. Marymount has had a great year. Now they're very senior laden. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see what they're like next year. Uh, you know, Frostburg, you're never quite sure what you're going to get. Uh, so there's some teams in the, you know, Mary Washington's another team I think is going to get pretty good pretty quick. So it's going to be challenging. But the fact of the matter is, you know, we have that core in place now that's going to be juniors. And it's going to really, the expectation will be that for them to, um, you know, win some more games next year. And I, I don't think anybody's in the program is shying away from that at all. But it's, you know, it's been a, it's been a long two-year process of rebuilding this and getting it back to where we want to get it. But it's being built for the long term which is really what I think is, is exciting and, and should be exciting to everybody moving forward. Yeah, well, before Saturday's game, we did catch up with Co- Coach and uh, got some of his thoughts on long-term and the way that his team was playing here down the stretch. It has gotten better uh, as the season's gone, and, and I know you and I were just talking. You kind of wish you had a, you know, another month, another chance to go through the league again, huh? Yeah, you know, it, it's one of those things where we kind of – we knew that it was a – going to be time it was going to take time for the group to gel and uh going into it, i didn't know how long it would take but it took a while and then we made some changes and we've really started to figure life out here in the last two and a half three weeks you know and i'd love to go through the league one more time and get another shot at, at everybody and, and see where we ended up but you don't play a triple round robin you know you you get the chances that you have and you have a finite amount of opportunities and um this is where we are so we just got to now work towards next year behind the scenes and and some of the little things and and everything how would you grade the strides that uh that the team in general has made or individual players or however you however you would look at it you know it's really been tremendous and it's one of those things that people on the outside of the program they're not going to listen to me. They're not going to believe me. They're going to look at the record and the results. And um, But we've made tremendous strides. Uh, we've had freshmen develop in ways that I never thought that they would coming in. Um, we've really come together as a group. Uh, the guys believe in each other and buy into each other and have really then started to take that to the floor and understand 
you know, what it takes to be successful and, you know, one, on game day, and then two, on the practice floor. And that's the biggest adjustment for in young guys is understand what it takes on a daily basis, not just on Saturday and Wednesdays. Well, Wednesday night's game this past one was outstanding. Uh, what were you most pleased with? It, it seemed to me like your team did pretty much everything well and, and really controlled the game from start to finish. Well, the game's a lot easier when you make shots, <laughs> you know? So it was great to see. We were, I mean, for whatever it was, eight, nine, ten games in a row, we were in a slump, you know, shooting 20 something percent from three, and, and that's not our team. So. On top of all the developmental issues, we had a physical issue. You know, we were just in a in a slump that offensively, and it was great to break out of that and kind of release that monkey from the back, so to speak, and knock some shots down. But I thought overall we just competed at the level necessary um, to win a college basketball game. You got a, a whole lot more from your guards, a, a big boost from them in that game. Was it as simple as that, making shots or, or anything different that they did to kind of complement what the big men have been doing? No, it really is making shots. You know, when when you have guys stretching the floor out, that then opens up the inside, and, and it just makes it a lot easier, you know. So, you know, at, at one point in the year, we were shooting almost 40% from three, and we nosedived. And, you know, some of that was adjusting and learning how to play in a new system and where I get my shots and where I don't get my shots. And some of it was just making open shots. Um, so when, when you make those, we become much harder to guard. And, and lastly, as we look toward the off season and, and continuing to build, what are you looking to, to accomplish and your coaching staff? And I know we talked about it earlier this week. I mean, you kind of feel like it's just a, a couple of pieces added to the mix that can maybe create more depth and, and help you, you know, really start to turn a corner. But what are the next uh you know, weeks or, or even months like for you guys as, as you continue to look forward? Now is the time that Coach Bollinger really starts to hate me because I <laughs> pester him on a near daily basis about who's committing and where are they going and who's coming and who are we going to get and who are we going to get and who are we going to get. And like you said, it's all about creating depth and creating more competition. We have a lot of good players in our program. We'll be adding some more good pieces um, in the next couple months. And then it's getting all of them to improve – until next October 15th. You know, it can't be an October 15th to March 15th thing. It's got to be something where all year round these guys are working. And we've got a great strength and conditioning program set up with Volt Athletics. Um, so our guys will be working on that and then doing their skill development stuff and playing and just continually working to get better. And now, you know, these first two summers of your college career, freshman to sophomore, and um, sophomore to junior, usually when guys make jumps, bodies mature a little bit more, they get a little bit stronger. So we're looking to have a massive summer for our program. All right, Scott, so there you have it from Coach Hunter himself. And, uh, you know, obviously he's very positive going forward. And one thing that's interesting to me, uh, and I mentioned this Saturday, uh, it's – you know, there, there's some coaches that when their teams are in the postseason, they can't really recruit as much. So <laughs> maybe silver lining, uh, our season being done, that's the only focus now. But you know, I asked him if if there's a small part that you know he's able to focus solely on that. He he said not really. I mean, that's been the focus all along anyway. I mean, they they put in so many hours. I don't think they're going to spend more time recruiting now. I think they've been doing that all along, even during the season. Recruiting has become a year-round process. There's really not a time when, you know, there are traditional quiet periods. But overall, you're constantly reaching out to kids, finding out where they stand, watching, you know, going to watch games. And, you know, the next couple of weeks are crazy because they're basically going to be going almost every night to a game somewhere in the region and sometimes out of region. You know, um, I think Nate's going down to Fairfax tonight and, Coach is going down to Baltimore, and you know they're both going different places, and they're going to be in the car for a lot of hours the next couple of weeks until you know basically state playoffs are done, because uh, you're basically going to be going and looking at kids throughout that entire process, and then that you know, that finishes up, and then you know the AAU season kicks off, and all these other times, and really what you're trying to do is get kids to commit as soon as possible, but you know a lot of kids we're looking at are also potential scholarship D2 kids. Uh, who are waiting to hear back from that school. So it kind of the whole process really becomes tough because those kids want to wait and see if they're going to get any money 
um, or if they're going to go Division Three or what they're going to do. You know, if you if you're in on good players, the waiting gets longer and longer and longer, and that just is because kids want to see what their options are and want to hold out that hope that you know they can be a scholarship type player. Uh, but really, when we've gotten good players, it's been it's usually a pretty late commit in terms of the school year. And um, you know, heck, one of our one of our best baseball players of all time, Matt Day, didn't commit until after Memorial Day of the senior year, <laughs> which is just um, you know is kind of crazy to think about that. But you know that happens. You know, you get a lot of late commits, and you know that unfortunately sometimes the waiting game is is by far the hardest part of the whole process. Must have been a nice early summer present for Coach back Ooh, in the day. That was a that get was him a great coming present. in. Yeah, two time All American. That's that's okay. Yeah, they don't always fall in your lap like that. <laughs> well, definitely looking forward to, to what's ahead with the men's team, and very optimistic about the years to come. So we'll take a break here on your College Spartan Sports Weekly, and we've got some conference championships from this past weekend to talk about when we come back swimming indoor track and field stay tuned here on sports radio 1350 woyk 1350.com and the woyk mobile apps hi i am cindy scullion one of the proud owners of frank storm and company we have been voted one of the best for 14 years by the york dispatch readers for your personal and business tax needs call one of my partners or competent staff to set up your tax appointment for your 2014 taxes We also can handle doing payrolls, sales tax, and compilations for your businesses. Give us a call at one of our three convenient locations, York, Dallastown, and Hanover. Hey athletes, does the winter weather dampen your sports training? It doesn't have to. Take your game inside at Backyard University, York's spectacular indoor sports training facility, right at home in your backyard. Located inside Fairmont Gym at 201 South Charles Street in Red Lion, Backyard University is a beautiful, state-of-the-art indoor complex for all of your sport needs. Featuring a complete baseball and softball training complex with batting cages, pitching tunnels, and a turf field for the entire team, Backyard hosts camps, clinics, and competitive youth travel teams to play in the region's top tournaments. Join York Revolution greats Jason Espito, Daryl Harang, and Corey Thurman for one-on-one training. And take your speed and agility to a whole new level with professional trainer David David Brixius from Explosive Sports Performance. Play your game year-round at Backyard University, right at home in your backyard. Visit online at backyard-university.com. Security in life isn't something you just wish for. You build it with a strong financial plan. Start with Northwestern Mutual. Together, we'll design a disciplined and balanced approach to financial security because reaching your goals is something we both want to work toward. To learn more, contact me, Dan McGarry at my office on the square in York. Look for the blue awnings. Who's helping you build your financial future? The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The new Wyndham Garden York, formerly the Holiday Inn by the West Manchester Mall, has been fully renovated and remodeled. With 177 upgraded guest rooms, over 16,000 square feet of meeting space, two large ballrooms, indoor and outdoor pools, a much larger fitness center, a new business center, and free Wi-Fi throughout. The new Fender's Grill and Pub features American cuisine and a casual atmosphere using local meats, produce, wine, and craft beers. The new Wyndham Garden, 2,000 loud Road in York. Stop in or call us at 846-9500. We're Screaming Green. How about you? The York College Spartans are on Sports Radio 1350 WOIK. Back here on your College Spartan Sports Weekly. And over the weekend, the indoor track and field championships in the very building where the Spartan women's basketball team will play their CAC tournament opening round game tomorrow night. That would be the versatile Freeman Center at Christopher Newport. And uh, Derek, the report on how the Spartans fared at indoor track championships over the weekend, sir? They fared pretty well. Uh, Coach Lobianco was pleased overall. He kind of predicted where we would finish we finished uh, third on the men's side and fifth on the women's side and just to give you some quick figures um, overall combined we we had on the me- both men's and women's we had one individual champion 
uh, one meet record. Three school records fell, and we had seven all CAC performers, which means we had seven people finish either first or second in their respective e- events. 27 top six finishers and combined 132 points. Uh, the big headline coming out of the weekend was senior distance runner Michael Stetson um, took home the 5K crown as he set a new meet record with a time of 15 10, 76. And that time actually broke his former teammate and former Spartan, Spartan All-American Tim Hartung held that record previously. And on the women's side, it, it was talking with, talking with Coach Lou Bianco, he, he brought up a good point is, you know, we don't have a lot of people competing in pretty much half the events, so we're surrendering a lot of points right there. Um, but the events we did perform, and we p- performed very well, especially on the distance side. Um, Jess Miller, she took home a second-place finish in both the 5K and the 3K. And senior distance runner Caroline Delaney also performed well as she captured a sec- second-place finish in the mile. So, and, and also, again, on the men's side, uh, took home second, third, and fourth in the pole vault. And those guys really performed well they all took they all hit a height of 13 feet five and a quarter inches um kevin landis took home the second place finish basically it goes based on whoever reaches the height in the least number of attempts uh kevin landis uh reached that height first followed by drew chowan and Darius rodriguez so overall good showing for the men and the women they will compete next week at the um George Mason, last chance me, they will try to get a few people so we can get some better times to get into the Nationals. All right, very good. If uh, Maybe if you added my jumps, like aggregate scores over five, six, seven attempts, I might be able to... Might be clearing three feet there. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> All right, Scott, swimming. Well, no, I, I, oh, I, I did want to add that you know the, we will be hosting the Outdoor Track and Field Championships this year, uh, which we're really excited to be able to do, and Certainly it'll be nice if the Spartans continue the upward trend that they've shown the, the last couple of years under Coach LeBianco. And, and certainly uh, we have more, t- more team members of the, of the outdoor club. There's just – or outdoor team. There's certain kids that don't run in the winter, just whether it be academic you know, concentrations prior to the spring season or, or whatever. So we'll have a little bit more stock team uh, come outdoor time, which will start, I believe, what do you say, the outdoor meet start mid-March at, at Little Town? Yeah, Midtown. yep. So uh, that's not too far away. All right, swimming. Spartans were at the Capital Athletic Conference Championships, hosted by St. Mary's College. On, again. Again. I know. Shocking. On uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The women finished fifth of six teams. They had 371 points. They had five new school records and a number of top eight finishes, led by senior Courtney Dashow. She finished fifth in the 50 freestyle. She finished fifth in the 100 breaststroke. She finished sixth in the 100 freestyle. Uh, Casey Banks, she's a freshman. She finished sixth in the 400 IM. She also finished fourth, the Spartans' highest finish uh, for an individual in the 200 Butterfly. Madison Tonke finished eighth in the 400 IM. She also finished eighth in the 1650 Freestyle, which for those of you, I believe, is a mile in the pool. Uh, that's, uh, oh, wow. that's a long swim. Uh, Samantha Hay finished eighth in the 100 Breaststroke. While uh, she also finished eighth in the 200 breaststroke, and then Kate McConaughey finished seventh in the 200 butterfly. So the girls, some really good performances. You look up and down this list, other than Courtney Dashow, everybody's back. So it's pretty exciting to have that strong group of female swimmers coming back for next year. On the men's side, a, a great, spectacular weekend. They had finished second of six teams, 553 points. They were 135 points in place, the third in front of third place. 15 school records and four NCA provisional cuts. And basically what that means is to there's a there's a minimum to get into the NCA championships for swimming and we had four of those times exceeded that minimum cut. Kyle Walthall uh, was added again. He his 200 breaststroke time of 159.82 in the prelims ranks him 5th in the country in that event. So he's going to be going to the championships. He will also be swimming the 100 uh, breaststroke. He now has 5 CAC individual championships in his career as he won two more this weekend. Um, as he was one of the two champions, Walthall in the 100 and 200 breaststrokes, and then the freshman Morgan Schreiber also captured the 800 backstroke. Schreiber was also finished fourth in the 50 free and finished, as we go down this list, first in the 100 backstroke and third in the 200 butterfly. 
Uh, Matt Terrell finished sixth in the 500 free. Shane Bonner finished fourth in the 53, 50 free, seventh in the 100 fly, and then also finished sixth in the 100 free. Uh, Cody Latchford Sr. finished fifth in the 200 freestyle, and then also finished seventh in the 1650 freestyle, as that's, as we said, a very long swim. Um, Donald Timmerman finished fifth in the 100 breaststroke. Uh, Russell stole sixth in the 200 backstroke. And then Brian Hughes finished third in the 100 freestyle. So a great weekend for the Spartans. 15 team records. That's a pretty significant accomplishment. That's basically rewriting uh, almost half your records, if not more, uh, during the championship weekend. I think Coach Kurtz was very excited um, also about the four provisional cuts. Uh, we will find out Wednesday officially uh, where Kyle will, uh, will be going. It's almost a you know a 99.9% chance unless there were a lot of unbelievable times put up this weekend, which you know likely has never been the history of that. So what is uh, also interesting is he's made the provisional cuts for the 100 and the 200, but he even if he doesn't make the time in the 100 or isn't one of the top 24, top 24, 32, I'm not quite sure 100% on that, but he will get – he will get to swim in the 100 because he also has met that provisional time in addition to qualifying for the 200. So he'll likely be swimming both of those events in te- Shenandoah, Texas, uh, March 18th through the 21st. So that's he's got a couple weeks to, to rest, and, and then, well, he's not really going to rest. He's going to swim a lot. Uh, but that's always a challenge because he's going to be doing it by himself. So that's, a, that's something that, that will be uh, a challenge for him. But he got to do it last year, so it should also prove to be uh, something that won't be a problem for him moving forward. So we'll find out for sure on Wednesday, and be sure to check ycpspartans.com for all the up-to-date information on Kyle. In the meantime, he can also bask in the glow a little bit of breaking news. Let's, let's break it. Oh, you want the clip? I would like oh, the clip. Have, I thought we, we had clip? planned it. Do you not have the clip I ready? do. I do have the clip, yes. All right, here's fantastic. The, we'll be ready to go here. Here's, here comes the clip. Great Odin's Raven! I've just been handed an urgent news story, and I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. The clip hasn't gotten old yet. Never gets old, Daryl. Okay. This week's Spartan Athlete of the Week is Kyle Walthall. After coming off a two, grabbing two individual titles this weekend, and he was also part of five school records, two CAC records, two meet records, and also, as we said, established three NCAA professional cut times. One was in the relay team in addition to his two breaststroke times. Um, so just an all-around... Yeah, it was, just a, it was a clear-cut winner this week. I mean, Kyle was just dominated the weekend. So congratulations to him. Here's the thing. There's not a lot of people out there that have probably ever come to a York College swim meet. But it was a lot like when Coach Bastros was wrestling. It's kind of must-see TV. You come and you see him uh, swim, and it's, it can be so dominant. I mean, he won, the, he won the 200 breaststroke by over four seconds. That's a, that's a pretty significant account in a championship-type situation, uh, which is just – it's pretty incredible, and to see him really go, he he has put himself in fantastic position to to be an All American again. Which you know we he was the first two time All American for us, so it'll be very interesting to see if he can repeat the feat uh, this year. I think he's swimming be- as good as ever, and uh, I would be stunned if he didn't go out to Texas and do a great job in a couple weeks. Well, congratulations to him and to all of the Spartan swimmers and track and field athletes from this past weekend. And we'll wrap up the show some spring sports when we come back, those that actually happened and those that did not. And we have a little bit of a mixed bag with regards to that. So we'll talk some snowy lacrosse when we return here on your College Spartan Sports Weekly. Get ready for winter now and save big on your heating oil or propane costs. Call today to schedule your first fill. And don't forget to ask our energy advisors about the right money-saving plan or budget to fit your lifestyle. Lock in your rate and protect your price all winter. Our price-protected customers save an average of $325 per year. Visit ShipleyEnergy.com or call 855-4SHIPLEY to schedule your next heating oil or propane delivery. Shipley Energy, energy for life. At OSS Health, our highly trained physicians are on the field, in the training room, at home games, or away. From preseason physicals to postseason surgery, we're on the sidelines so athletes don't have to be, getting you back in the game. 
When it comes to sports medicine, we're the ones you've trusted for 30 years. OSS Health Sports Medicine, experience you can trust. Visit us online at osshealth.com. January and February are Caribbean months at Fender's Grill and Pub, located at the Wyndham Garden, York, formerly the Holiday Inn by the West Manchester Mall. Featuring Chef's Caribbean specialties and Caribbean drinks, plus Fender's regular menu. Visit Fender's to beat the winter blues and sign up for a chance to win a beach vacation. Register during January and February. The winner will be drawn on March 1st. Fender's is open daily for breakfast and dinner, for private parties, and we have live entertainment Friday nights. Fender's Grill and Pub, 2000 Louts Road in York. Come visit us today. At Northwestern Mutual, we take a disciplined and balanced approach to financial planning. Together, we'll help build your financial future on time-tested principles, not market trends, so you can take advantage of life's opportunities. To learn more, contact me, Dan McGarry, at my office on a square in York. Look for the blue awnings. Who's helping you build your financial future? The Northwestern Mutual Life Insurance Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. In December, it was a four-point game, and now these traditional rivals meet for a chance to play for district gold. I'm Ron Ruman. Andy Bria and I will have the next chapter in the York Catholic Trinity Girls Storied Rivalry tonight at 7.15 on the High School Basketball Game of the Week presented by Wellspan Sports Medicine. The Irish are shooting for an unprecedented 10th straight district title, but the Shamrocks, once the queens of District 3, would love to dethrone their old rivals. Your Catholic Trinity tonight at 715 on Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. Your home for the Spartans. Sports Radio 1350 WOYK. I believe next week marks the return of Old Guy Radio, perhaps. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. But uh, talking some lacrosse on, on this snowy Monday and snowy weekend. and uh, The women actually did get a game in last week, actually a couple of games. The men did not, but we have some scheduling news there. So, uh, Derek, we're going to start with you on, on women's lacrosse, correct? Correct, Daryl. Back um, there in the, the back row. Back row. <laughs> yep, holding it down. Uh, so, yeah, last Wednesday... Uh, the number 13 ranked women's lacrosse team season opener and home opener uh, against Lebanon Valley. Second year in a row, they've opened up with Lebanon Valley and have gone to op- overtime. Um, and it came out victorious once again in double OT on an Allison Colasi goal, which came in the, well, a buzzer beater. And I'll explain this a little bit. It came in the first half of the second overtime period. And for those who don't know, overtime rules in women's lacrosse, they're goofy. Yeah, a little, a little different. The um, they break the overtime periods up into two three-minute halves, um, and then they switch ends at the end of each half. Even though it's considered one uh, one six-minute overtime, they break it down by. Yeah, it's silly. It's very interesting, but yeah, Allison tallied the goal at, with one second remaining in the first half of the second OT. Is it because of the wind? Do they do that? No, I, I think that's just they break it up to give both teams the opportunity to to play at each half of the field. That now. Um, the first overtime is you play the whole six minute period. Mm-hmm. The second overtime and, and any subsequent no. overtime is sudden victory. Did my curiosity interrupt you, Derek? I'm sorry. No. Okay. No, He's please used ask to away, Derek. <laughs> 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 um, but um, yeah, it was a good. It was a good win. I think you know, Lebanon Valley, a uh, strong team, a strong opponent. Um, you know, it was a good test for us to get our feet wet against them. But I, I kind of equate this team to our women's basketball team, where you, where we graduated. Um, a lot of decorated seniors, two All-Americans last year. And I think they're – we returned a lot of talent. But I think, again, like it's girls used to playing – they have to step up into new roles, get used to playing big minutes. Um, we, had, we had to replace a, an All-American goalie with, with now a freshman goalie who on Wednesday did not look like a freshman goalie. She looked very good um, in goal. And Charlotte Wright uh, looked uh, very confident, had a, hu- a couple huge um, saves on free position attempts – um, one probably no bigger than the one coming with nine seconds remaining in regulation to preserve the tie heading into overtime. So uh, seeing that performance from her um, is very encouraging moving forward. She had ten saves in the day, so that's a huge freshman debut for her for sure. Well, it was a little scary because the first two shots she faced, she gave up goals. And yeah. you know, part of that, Derek and I were talking in the press box, became because of defense kind of just being out of position. Yeah, I think uh, we they kind of walked through our defensive zone and were able to get some – 
prime scoring opportunities and, and capitalize on those chances. So I think it was more so the defense kind of let her down, uh, kind of hung her out to dry early on. Um, but, but after she, that, she yeah, was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Buckled down and, and uh, looked really good. And, you know, talk, and talking with Coach after the game, you know, she coaches holds her team to a high standard, you know, and not overly pleased with the performance. Even though we got the win, double OT, um, you know, I think she, she definitely holds her team to a high standard, which you got to respect and you got to understand that. Um, you know, we had 20 turnovers, so it wasn't the cleanest game we've, we could play. But, um, you know, it's the, it's the first game. Um, like played I said, in about 20 degree temperatures. Played, yeah, it was very. Uh, the temperatures were very extreme, and I think everyone's just trying to get their feet wet, trying to get comfortable. I think it was those first game jitters too. They had to get, they had to get over and just kind of gel and come together. And I think you know after letting up two goals, coach called a key timeout, kind of got them together and said, "Hey, you know, relax. We're better than this." And um, you know they went out and and proved that they were. So it was. Uh, Good game overall. You know, Lebanon Valley. We kind of equate them equate them to like Salisbury. They're not really, they're not really bad in any sport. I mean, yeah. they're they're a strong school across the board, and um, you know, they'll probably be a team that will contend for you know conference title in the in the Centennial or the MAC, excuse me. And uh, so yeah, it was a good first good test for us. Well, and they were sixteen. With. They were sixteen and four last year, and only lost two two starters from that right. team that went sixteen and four last year. So it's a it's a quality team. It's a team that we were able to beat in overtime last year. Yes. Uh, so it's uh, it seems to be the trend against Lebanon Valley is uh, a close game all the way throughout, and the Spartans pull out a win in overtime. And then the Spartans got back in action on Friday. They had a uh, home scrimmage against the Welsh senior national team. They were on a USA tour. If it was uh, soccer, we'd call it a friendly. Yeah. As if, yeah as you got yourself a, a souvenir. That's mighty friendly. Yes, I got a nice... Nice lanyard. Uh, I was um, one of their coaches was up in the press box filming, and we, you know, we were talking, and they were, you know, as polite as can be, very friendly people. Um, they most of their players are college age, so they're on a they're on a week long break last week, and so they came over here and played a few schools um, throughout the week. I think St. Joe's. They were in St. Joe's on last Thursday before they came to York. They also scrimmaged F and M. Um, uh, fortunately, you know, it's, I mean, we played really well. I mean, playing against, you know, I played against a national team. I don't <laughs> care what country it is. Um, we ended up losing 11-10 in overtime, which was interesting. You have an overtime period in a scrimmage. But, hey. Five degrees outside. <laughs> yes. Oh, bitter cold, bitter cold. But, um, no, I think we look very good. We look strong. Um, the Welsh team definitely, I think, a little more athletic. I think it was very impressed with their speed. Um, and their and their passing in the offensive zone was very impressive, but it, it was back and forth game. Uh, they'd score two, we'd come back, we score, you know, we score two more tied up. So that was a great test for our girls as well to kind of, you know, get an early challenge uh, playing a high caliber team there early on. So it was a, I think a good confidence booster for them. Even though we came up in the losing end, um, they should walk away with their heads held high, know that they gave a good effort against a very strong team. All right. Well, and the men's lacrosse team, Scott, they've got to be. <laughs> hey, just, uh, it's been a interesting. At the bit. Yeah, it's been an interesting mm-hmm. start to the year. Of course, postponed against Stevenson. And then on Saturday, everybody was there. Muhlenberg, the officials, our team, and the snow started at ten thirty. So that kind of put a kink in the plans. Uh, they were going to try and start the game, but really, um, you know, I think sensibility prevailed. Uh, they weren't going to be able to keep the lines clean, and obviously if you can't see the lines, you can't play a game. And, and it would have been a dangerous situation, I think, for our student-athletes and for their student-athletes. So uh, the game got postponed to yesterday. The field was not able to be cleared yesterday. So with Muhlenberg off the schedule, as they finished, they were the last-place team in the Centennial. We've replaced them with number 5, Washington College. So the uh, that game will be played on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, 3 o'clock, Kinsley Field. Uh, the plows were out Clearing the turf today, so we should be in good shape uh, with no weather expected in the next couple of days. There's a weather report again. Uh, <laughs> to be able to play against Washington College, the fifth-ranked team against the tenth-ranked team and one of the best games. Uh, you know, We keep having all these great games on our schedule, uh, but that's another nationally-ranked team to the slate. And certainly I, I texted Coach Childs uh, last night. I said, well, schedule doesn't get any easier. Uh, so that would be a great challenge. Washington also got postponed this weekend. So it'll be the the opener for both squads, but that'll be Wednesday. Spartans travel then to McDaniel on Saturday. So a busy week for York and, and certainly a centennial conference-based week with uh, Washington and McDaniel this week. At long last, they will 
drop the ball on that's, the field. Uh, that's that's what the hope is. Um, so it should be should be a great day. I mean, if it, hopefully the weather report holds up, it'll be a a little bit warmer than what it's been the last couple of days, and certainly what it's going to be tomorrow. Uh, and you know, hopefully people can make it out if they can't. Uh, the video and uh, live stats will be available on ycpspartans.com. But it, it's something. It should be a great game. Should be a great collegiate uh, t- a game to watch, and certainly a good atmosphere uh, early on in the season. And then we turn to baseball and softball. They head on their spring trips this weekend. Uh, the men are heading down to Myrtle Beach. The uh, women are softball is heading down to Fort Myers, Florida. So we are actually going to talk to Coach uh, Pettis, the softball coach, this week, and and have that for next week's edition as they start their season. We might even talk to Coach Scappa too. What the heck? Uh, we'll we'll be able to get an interview with him before they head we'll out. Make it um, a good question. <laughs> it'll, it'll be a Joe Theismann situation where you just really have to ask one question and. And Scap's great. He's really he's really good about being extremely thorough, and and I I always enjoy talking to him, and and certainly uh, it's a lot of fun. And Daryl, I had one thing for you that I didn't tell you about earlier. On Friday afternoon, former Spartan great Kenny Foss stopped down, took a tour of the Grumbacher Center. He hadn't been back in in eight years. He said to say hello, but oh, that's awesome. Kenny looked great. He's up in Boston, and they get a week off. I guess maybe it's I don't know. I'm sure they haven't had enough snow time this year, but uh, he got to come down. Uh, with his significant other, and they took the tour of the uh, of the building, and it was great to see him. Kenny looks like he could still lace him up and <laughs> and, and shoot fifty percent from three, but it was a lot of fun to get a chance to talk to him and see him. That's all. I'm glad you passed that along. That is uh, that's a guy that we definitely enjoyed calling his games and watching his games and, and being around that group. Well, so. I'm not sure he ever got enough credit for as good as he was. He was yeah. a great basketball player and really was kind of one of that glue guys on that team that. The really, you know, he he reminded me. He goes, you know, I was only three points away from a <laughs> thousand, and he did that in three years because he transferred in as a sophomore. So right. Kenny was a fantastic, fantastic player, and one of the toughest guys I think we've ever had play in our program. I and mean, he was just he would take that he would take on defending the teams, the other team's top scorer. He was incredible. He was a fantastic basketball player. Yeah, well, good good note to end on, guys. Thank you very much, and. Uh, Look forward to next week. Hopefully we get those spring sports a little more underway. I would hope so. I hope the weather just gets better in general. Yeah, it would be nice. Not asking for much. All right, well, you can tune in tomorrow night again, 5.15 pregame for the Spartan women at Christopher Newport basketball uh, CAC tournament opener. And until then, for Derek Berenshausen here in the studio, Scott Geis, Daryl Henry saying so long. Thanks for listening to your College Spartan Sports Weekly. We'll be back with you at 4 o'clock next week. Your home for York's home team. The York College Spartans play here. Sports Radio 1350, WOYK, York.